After a very long teaser campaign, this is finally it. The 2024 Mitsubishi Triton. It's the first new from the ground up vehicle in a very long time and one which carries Mitsubishi's hopes and dreams into the future in Australia as well. In this video, we're gonna walk you through everything you need to know about this new truck, including when it will arrive in Australia and all the other details that you should know about its new engine, its new chassis, and how it's expanded in almost every dimension. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. The new generation Triton has expanded in every dimension compared to the aging model it replaces, with a whopping 130 extra millimeters in its wheelbase, an expanded length, width, and height too. The same goes for its tray, which is expanded by 35 millimeters and interior space as well. We can't tell you how much it will cost in Australia yet, but we can tell you it's set to land in four familiar variants. The base GLX, mid-grade GLX Plus and GLS, as well as the top spec GSR. Only the GLX can be had as a 4x2, while the GLX Plus is the only version which can be chosen as an extra cab. The GLS and GSR score the brand's signature Super Select 2 four-wheel drive control system, which allows four-wheel drive without locking the center diff at higher speeds, as well as a new mud and snow driving mode. These high-grade versions will also be available with leather interior trim. Importantly, underneath there's a newly developed ladder frame chassis, and hiding under the bonnet there's an upgraded engine too. More on that in a moment. When will it arrive in Australia? Mitsubishi says the new generation utes built for the Australian spec will enter production in December of 2023 for a February 2024 on sale date. When it gets here, it will face stiff competition from new versions of the Ford Ranger and Volkswagen Amarok, as well as the Isuzu D-Max, although it will be far more fresh than its primary Japanese rivals, the Toyota Hilux and Nissan Navara. Meanwhile, lower cost rivals from LDV, GWM, and even the growing popularity of the Sangyong Musso will continue to pose a threat. To help fend off these rivals, the Triton scores a dramatic redesign, which the brand says enhances not only its road presence, but lowers its drag by 8.1%. It leans into the extra width while bringing with it a new interpretation of the brand's dynamic shield face, and of course, adds new sets of alloy wheel designs. Expect new colors previously unavailable too, such as the Yamabuki orange you see here. Now we've also seen some Tritons at the show with the kinds of accessories you can expect in the Australian market. This one here is fitted with a bar and LED lights as well, a snorkel, roof racks, and a canopy out the back too. So plenty to work with when the truck does arrive in Australia. If there's one thing the Triton needed above all else, it's an interior redesign. And finally, the new generation version looks every part the modern passenger car it needs to be. Expect a familiar look and feel to the current Outlander with a wide symmetrical dash layout, nicer looking and feeling materials throughout, a cool new almost Lancer Evo looking steering wheel, geometric patterns throughout the cabin, and a digital overhaul which brings this ute well and truly into 2024. This includes a similar 9-inch multimedia touchscreen now with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android connectivity to the one that appears in the Outlander, and a 7-inch semi-digital instrument cluster too. The inside of the Triton's cabin is expanded by 49 millimeters in terms of its width, which doesn't sound like a lot on paper, but it does go a long way to making this truck feel bigger and tougher than it was before. As you can see here, there's a cool new steering wheel, not like one we've seen on any Mitsubishi product before. It's kind of, kind of got almost an Evo look to it, which I really like. The one in this one is leather bound, kind of like the steering wheels you can expect on higher grade vehicles in Australia. You've got this nice, big touchscreen panel, which is similar from the one that appears in the Outlander, complete with dials and switches as well, so you won't have to negotiate with things purely through a touch interface. That's really nice to see. This model being similar to what you can expect in the Australian market too, there's the familiar Super Select drive selector down here, but it's also got some new drive modes, some new software this time around as well. Now I have set this car to my own driving position, and it feels really quite good here. I feel like I've got a good handle on the wheel. There's quite a nice sort of high belt line, but good visibility over the bonnet as well and I do feel quite comfortable in here there is an increase in soft touch materials which weren't in the Triton before hopping in the back seat here and Mitsubishi has again promised improved space for the back seat and well it feels pretty good again that's behind my own driving position and as you can see I've got plenty of knee room there's somewhere for my feet to go as well and it does feel kind of nice and wide in here too although the soft touch materials don't all continue all the way into the door card this is actually a plastic filler here so it'd be interesting to see if that's mirrored on final Australian spec cars when we eventually do get to experience them the seats have a nice cutout and they're quite soft too quite comfortable and I do also like the geometric shape of these headrests as well. 
Now in terms of practicality, I didn't mention headroom before, but there is quite a bit of it in here because the headlining actually sort of angles upward towards the rear occupant, so that's clever as well. On the backs of the seats here, like the Outlander, you've got these pockets here so you can hold things like phones, very clever, probably good for kids too. And for air vents, you've got these adjustable ones in the roof, so not usually down here like they are with the USB-C and USB-A outlets as well as a 12 volt outlet, but they're up in the roof there. The new dimensions also expand on interior space and Mitsubishi hasn't forgotten modern storage options either. With plenty of bottle holders, storage cubbies, you name it. The brand has also said shoulder room on the inside has expanded by 49mm, which doesn't sound like a lot but really adds up once you're inside, especially for the second row in dual cab versions. Now in terms of practicality around the back here, this tray has extended by 35 millimeters and in terms of towing capacity, well, that's some of the biggest news. It's been majorly upgraded by 400 kilos to a total of 3,500 kilos, much more competitive. For those interested in off-roading angles and ground clearance, see those for the dual cab 4x4 version on your screen now. That's not necessarily where the big news stops though, because Mitsubishi is finally introducing an upgraded engine for the incoming Triton. Now those who are hoping for a V6 this time around, well they might be a little bit disappointed to see that the new Triton actually ships with a 2.4 litre 4 cylinder engine the same as before, but it has been significantly upgraded with a new bi-turbo setup for totals of 150 kilowatts and 470 newton metres. While that's not earth shattering, it is a significant hike from the outgoing model which produced 133 kilowatts and 430 newton metres and puts it roughly in line with the current Hilux while offering higher outputs than both the D-Max and Navara. Mitsubishi says this new turbo system will also up response at low revs, but also offer more at the top end too. You can also expect an upgraded version of the six-speed automatic transmission, which sends power to the wheels on both 4x2 and 4x4 versions, while a six-speed manual transmission will make a return, but not for the initial launch. Mitsubishi also says there's new suspension this time around to improve ride quality and durability, and it continues to consist of coils in the front and leaf springs in the rear. Now I know there's been a lot of talk of a Raptor rivaling full fat rally art version and for a hint of what that could look like, take a look at the AXCR rally truck, doesn't it look tough? While we don't yet have fuel consumption figures to share, it's interesting that Mitsubishi has made no announcement of even a mild hybrid system to help trim those numbers down and has even doused speculation that there might be a plug-in hybrid version in the works, with executives telling Cars Guide that the brand doesn't see a market for a plug-in hybrid ute. What can we expect on the electrification front then? Mitsubishi's plans include a fully electric ute, which it says will be related to the new Triton, but it might have a different name altogether. We'll have to wait until a later date to find out more. Safety is another area where Mitsubishi has made major strides this time around. The new generation Triton will feature auto emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane departure warning, active yaw control, adaptive cruise control on automatic models, and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. For the first time, the Triton also offers driver attention monitoring and a center airbag as it angles for a maximum ANCAP safety rating. Expect news on that front closer to its Australian launch. Finally, on the ownership front, Mitsubishi continues to offer its conditional 10-year warranty, the longest in the industry if you follow the brand's servicing schedule, which is paired with a 10-year cap price servicing program. We don't yet have details on service intervals or pricing, so stay tuned closer to the new Triton's launch for further details. So there you have it, everything we know so far about the 2024 Mitsubishi Triton. It's clear the brand has upped the ante this time around while sticking to the formula that's made it so successful in the past. But maybe now it's time for you to let us know what you think. Has Mitsubishi done enough this time around to make the Triton competitive enough with cars like the Hilux, like the Ranger? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, check out our full coverage of this event of the Triton over at carsguide.com.au.